Thank you so much for being here with us today for this Guesty for Hosts virtual meetup. How to ace your Airbnb cleaning and guest experiences. First, a few introductions. Uh, my name is Chang Kim. I'm the customer success lead at Guesty for Hosts. And joining me today is Mike O'Connell, head of partnerships at Turno, formerly known as Turnover BNB, uh, and their Guesty for Hosts newest partner. Um, but we'll have more on that exciting news to come. Uh, Mike joined Turno in 2021 as the company's director of strategic sales, and he continues to work with hosts and property management companies to help them improve their operational efficiencies and grow their businesses. Mike, thanks for joining us today. I was on mute. Thanks for having me on, Chang. I appreciate it. Definitely. All right. So a little bit of an agenda here in today's virtual meetup. I will begin by sharing some current industry data. And then I'll invite Mike to share his expert insights on short-term rental cleaners that'll enable you to better understand short-term cleaning operations and how to optimize your cleaning and turnover operations to reduce the stress around this aspect of hosting. We'll also take this opportunity to announce the exciting new partnership between Guest D for Hosts and Turno which enables our users to now benefit from Turno's marketplace of cleaners and automations integrated directly with our app. But uh, we'll talk more about that later. Following our presentation, we'll move on to our Q&A session. So feel free to start sending in any questions you have. We'll get to as many questions as we can. All right, so I'm going to start off with a quick look at industry data gathered from a recent AirDNA report, which shows how global Airbnb supply has reached an all-time record in 2022. As of September 2022, there were 1,374,000 plus listings in the U.S., and that's the highest number ever. Um, there were more than 6 million Airbnb listings worldwide. So this milestone has come at the heels of a steady increase in global active listings year over year, which is showing very little sign of significant slowdown. In the past three years alone, 54% of the current Airbnb listings have been added and projections for 2023 show that expectations are for growth in supply to continue, although probably at a slight, slightly slower pace than 2022 due to the current economic climate. Now, while 2022 saw record numbers in year-over-year -year growth in both supply and demand, projections for 2023 show a slight slowdown in momentum. Although both parameters are expected to continue to rise, supply is expected to exceed demand. Uh, you can see supply will grow 9%, demand will grow 5.5%. Um, so this indicates that the competition could get more intense for hosts and property managers which means all hosts should be asking themselves, how do I ensure that I land those bookings and increased revenue? So today we're gonna to touch upon the importance of cleaning management and creating smooth turnovers and an excellent guest experience to help hosts to stand out in a large pool of options. Both Turno and Guesty for Hosts provide key tools and automations that can enable hosts to up their game and attract more bookings and repeat guests. So now I'm going to show you a few ways that Guesty for Hosts enables you to streamline your operations so you can spend less time on the time-consuming tasks of managing your rentals and more time creating happy guests that leave great reviews and return your property and return to your property over and over. So Guesty for Hosts is a mobile-first platform that automates your hosting operations and gives you the upper hand on better hosting. With Guesty for Hosts, you can rest assured that you can be a better host to more guests with less effort. Guesty for Hosts is geared towards smaller managers, typically with one to three rentals that are often on the go. So we make it possible to manage everything from one easy to use app that works on both your computer and your mobile device. Guesty for Hosts has all the features you need to put your operations on autopilot, You've got a channel manager, unified inbox, automated messaging, and other automations throughout. And you can try Guesty for Hosts yourselves for free with a 14-day free trial. 
There's no credit card or demo or anything else required. You just sign up, connect your Airbnb listing. Uh, it is an Airbnb first platform. And you'll see for yourself how Guesty for Hosts can make your job easier. And if you sign up today, you get 30% off our annual plan. I want to take a few moments now to tell you about the exciting new partnership between Guesty for Hosts and Turno. Uh, for those of you not familiar, Turno, uh, formerly known as Turnover BNB, connects vacation rental hosts and local vetted cleaners to simplify and automate cleaning schedules and payments. And their product truly helps to remove the stress around cleaning management. And now Guessy for Hosts users can sign up for Turno's extensive marketplace to find local vetted cleaners and then schedule, manage, and pay them easily with our free integration. We envision this to be a big help to hosts just getting started, looking to add cleaners to their operation or even just to shop around for, for providers. And so this partnership provides users one more way to save time and money managing a short-term rental. Uh, stay tuned because Mike will shortly be sharing a special offer just for GFH users. But uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you this um, walkthrough of how you can find it in our, in our product. Um, if you click on the cleaning module, you'll see this banner at the bottom and you just click start. You can turn on the connection with the switch and you copy the API key, which you'll use um, when you set up your account with Turno. Um, you can actually create your account from there and you can use the API key once you're in the Turno product. Cool. With that, um, I will now invite Mike to share some exclusive insights on current trends in short-term rental cleaning and solutions to create efficiencies and automation to simplify cleaning management. So I'll stop sharing here and then I'll hand it over to you, Mike. Well, thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, I'm very, very excited about this partnership, but I don't want to waste too much time talking about that. Um, this is kind of the first time we're going to be able to share this new Cleaner Insights survey uh, that we've come up with. So just a little bit about Turno, what we are. We are both a web app and a mobile app, but we, along like Guest for Hosts, are very mobile-centric. Um, I'd say like 80% of our users are only really working off the mobile app, which is great. Uh, because now you're going to have an integration between Guesty for Hosts and Turno, um, both cleaner and host apps we have. Um, what you can do with our product is you can auto schedule, right? So you're going to sync in your calendars from Guesty for Hosts. So no matter where that booking came from, if it's from an OTA, if it's a direct booking, um, your cleaners are going to have insight into when those um, projects are going to occur. We have in app chat, we have checklists, quality control accounting, reporting, pretty much everything you need to kind of automate your cleaning and operations um, in an easy app. Now, what I really want to get into is like how important cleaning is uh, to the everyday host, the large property manager, like everyone, right? Um, I'm sure people on this call that have hosted have been in a panic and a bind where either their cleaner can't make it, you have a last minute booking. Like I know that cleaning, um, is, is very important. And it's something that sometimes isn't thought about when there aren't issues, but when an issue arises, it can be kind of detrimental, right? Because we all want to keep our reviews high. Um, we want a great guest experience. And if they show up and that place is not clean, um, it, it can be pretty damaging to your business. So what we did is we went out because we kind of, we have like 50,000 cleaners that work on our marketplace, give or take. Um, and we tried to do a poll and we got a really great sample size. I don't know of another survey that was SDR um, specific uh, that got this kind of response. So what we found, which was interesting, because when we first kind of started the business, we thought that most cleaners were kind of independent um, operators. And it turns out out of this poll, like 60% of them are not solo workers. They're either the business and they work with a team, which we found to be pretty interesting. Um and similar to hosts, like quality is everything, right? If you're a cleaning business, you're an independent person uh, and you do a bang up job, like you're not going to be invited back. So that was kind of the number one pain point, like ensuring there's a quality of service and being adaptable to the host. Um, and then the big problem that they have and, and also a priority is, you know, <laughs> how efficient can you be? Because a lot of the times you're only having like a window between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. It could be 11 and 3 to make that turn. So as a business or as an individual, 
how can you ensure quality and, you know, make the most profit? Because say I showed up to the place and I, you know, had two on the docket and I'm an individual and that first place is really, really dirty. And I got to spend some extra time there. Um, you know, you got to make it work. All right. So some of the frustrations that we found, the biggest uh, frustration is seasonal fluctuation. And a lot of people don't think about that. Um, but you could be in a market, you know, in like a Florida or a ski area where you're, you're really getting a lot of bookings during the winter and the summer. And you have these flex seasons where there might not be a lot of work. Um, the other thing that you, we have to be cognizant of is when there's cancellations that can hurt the cleaner's business because, you know, there could be a last minute cancellation and then they don't have to go flip. Then they got to try to find new work. Um, and that's a, that's another thing that. We, we see a lot and then getting clients is tough. And that's really what we're here to do is, is put people together, right? So we're vetting cleaners. We have an onboarding process at our company. Uh, they have to provide references, um, background check and kind of verify that they have experience cleaning short-term rentals. And what we're here to do is put good hosts and good cleaners together. And you guys can check out our app later and kind of do a marketplace search and see what's out there in your markets. Um, but we're really trying to get the best cleaners together with the best hosts. That's, that's what we want. Um, and we have ratings on both sides. Um, and much like hosts, what we find is, and this was interesting, 67% of the cleaners that we pulled plan on growing their business. Uh, if you're on this call midday, uh, you're probably pretty entrepreneurial. Um, you're invested in your business and you want to learn more information. Uh, so just like you guys, you know, these cleaners want to, they want to get ahead. They want to clean more places, but they also want to maintain that quality. Um, some of the other things I can kind of click on this pricing is, is a big challenge for cleaners because I've been in a situation where my neighbor's paying, you know, half the price that I am, <laughs> but they've had the cleaner for a long time. Um, so there's a lot of that going on and, and expanding in a uh, way that doesn't hurt the business because we all know hiring can be difficult. Um, and this is kind of something I wanted to harp on. The last part of our survey were like, what's what's something that you wish, you know, hosts knew? And you can kind of read through these, but one that I want to touch on real quick, and I know I don't have a lot of time, is build a process with your cleaner in mind. Um, I hosted like a lot of people self-clean and there's nothing wrong with self-cleaning, right? But a lot of the times that we see happening is, you know your place, you know how to clean it, and you don't have a process that's written down, documented in an app or anything. So if there's a situation where you can't be there to clean it, you break your foot, I don't know, life happens, right? What I would advise everyone to do, and you don't have to do it in our app or, you know, or just you could do it on a piece of paper, sell whatever, but just kind of like run through your process. Like you get into your place, you know, after a checkout, what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you look at? What's the second thing you do? Are you stripping your linens? Do you have a linen service? Are you doing the, um, you know, sheets first? Like, what's the process? And I would document that, even though you're doing it yourself, just so in that, you know, situation where someone else needs to come in, even if it's your cousin or your brother or a friend of yours, um, giving a good scope of work to someone else is so important. And, and this is a pain point in our app. Like, we allow people to, you know, book a cleaner. But if I don't give the cleaner any information and they're walking into something blind and they don't know the property, the odds are you're probably not going to get the best product out of them. You're not going to get the most satisfaction. And what we care about is that guest walking in and it being so immaculate that that's not their problem. Like we want the TV or Netflix not to work. Like that's that's the complaint that our company wants, right? We don't want there to be an issue with cleaning, but it kind of goes both ways. So what I would advise, like if there's one takeaway um, from this, even if you don't plan on using a turno cleaner or any other cleaner and your self cleaner, just kind of think about your process, document it somewhere, just in case uh, you're in a situation where you need someone else to come in. Uh, it's really, really important. And that's kind of the <laughs> why people come to us because something happens, they torn away, whatever. And then um, a cleaner doesn't know exactly what to do. Um, and then just some like considerations, um, you know, that are in place, we can kind of go through this. We have the ability to put guiding photos in our platform. So if that cleaner comes in and they're confused, 
to put your listing photos in the platform and then make them take pictures to match it up. That way the guest comes in, they complain, they say it doesn't match up, they're not clean. You have evidence to you know support that it was clean. Um, the one thing that we like, the only thing that keeps us in business these days is everyone needs a backup cleaner. I don't care if you're a self cleaner or a property management company with you know 100 properties and a full staff. There's always a need to have a roster, right? Like just keeping people in the back of your head or on your list that have the ability to come in that are going to help you out in a bind. I, I would just, you might not think it's an issue now, but it's, it's better to have them available than to scramble the night before or the morning of. Um, and that's going to keep your reviews up because you're going to get the place cleaned. And cleanliness is something that can really, really hurt your Airbnb review or your OTA review. So now onto the fun stuff. Normally we charge $6 a month on annual or $8 a month per property. Um, to utilize our platform, if you're using your own cleaner or self-cleaning or anything like that, what we're giving away, um, not giving away, <laughs> we've struck a deal with Guesty, and you're going to have a complimentary subscription to Turno. So if you have your own team, say you have three properties right now, you have your own team, you can put them on there, schedule them all for free. There's no subscription fee like there used to be. Some of you guys might be customers already. When you integrate with Guesty, that subscription fee is going to go away. Um, and kind of part of this is we really want a great experience for you know our partners over here and we want you to be able to have that marketplace available to you because that's our strong side we you can do a search in an area like if you're at, i don't know where you guys are but I'd, I'd advise you to maybe after this go on our website type in your zip code kind of see what's out there um and then have the ability you don't have to work with that cleaner but you can say hey look you know i self-clean i have my cleaner but you know just in case would you be available as a backup, I want to put you on my roster and um, they're going to be in there. And I kind of want to finish up here so we can get to the Q&A portion. So ask as many questions later. Um, thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to see your questions because those usually are more helpful. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike, uh, for sharing that uh, information. Uh, really useful stuff. And now we're going to move on to our Q&A. So starting those questions in, um, we'll start with a few pre-prepared questions, and then I'd love to open things up to you, the audience. Um, we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can. And we'll also get back to you after the event on any messages you send in the chat. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing here. And we'll move into our questions. So I'll start with uh, some pre-prepared questions. Uh, Mike, what practical tips do you have to make the process of scheduling cleaners smooth and frictionless? Ooh, that's kind of a tough one. Um, if you're using our app or using no app, um, I would always keep in mind that things happen life's ha life happens so always have you know a backup plan a contingency right if you're going to be self-cleaning um, what we advise is you can add you know as many backups in our platform and if for some reason you know you're not going to be able to make it you can just push that out to them and they'd be able to accept that job um you know if you're not using us i, I would really uh advise having people that are there um you know to help Cool. Um, what do hosts need to know before hiring a vacation rental cleaning service? So what are some important questions they should ask to make sure they're getting um, a reliable yeah. service? Oh. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we make it so you can literally ask anything you want. You can hold an interview with your cleaners. Um, you know, what's basically how the process works, and I know there's probably a little bit of confusion, on Turno is you're going to type your address in, you're going to write your square footage, how large your unit is, and you're going to place a bid, a bid, right? Um, then cleaners are going to respond back with pricing. From there, you can see their reviews. How many turns have they done on the platform? What are other hosts saying about that? Much like an Airbnb review process. So say I'm in Miami and I put a search out and I get 12 bids back. Um, 
what will happen is uh, you then can chat with them. So maybe you pick like three that you want to you know, do an interview with. Give them a walk through the property. I would, I would definitely give cleaners as much information as possible. Read their reviews. If, you know, we're, we're very open and honest. If this cleaner, maybe they could have done a bad job or were late to a cleaning. Um, that review stays in there, much like Airbnb. We have cleaners that have done like a thousand projects. And there's the one-off time where maybe they were late. They didn't get the job done in time. That one-star review is staying in there. Um, so that also keeps the quality up. Right. So cleaners know that, you know, when they're on our platform and quite frankly, anywhere else, like if I had my friend had a cleaner that no showed and they weren't on platform, probably not going to ask them uh, to use that cleaner. Right. Um, so just and cultivate a relationship, too. So I think a lot of confusion is like, even though you have a backup cleaner, you want to keep them, you know, happy. Uh, an angry cleaner is not someone you want to deal with. Um, so maybe there's a situation where you're self-cleaning and you, you just need a break and, you know, once a month you want to have a backup cleaner come in and you get that same person coming through, you build a relationship with them. Um, you know, it, it's going to be helpful to you. Uh, it's gonna be helpful to the cleaner because there could be a situation where you really need them. Um, and, uh, they're going to be there for you. Right. Um, so I would just vet them as much as possible. Like we do some pre-vetting, but we want you to work with someone you like because you know as a smaller host not like a large property management company like they're that crutch to your business that could you know kind of make or break you in a sense right like um so we want it's very important to have open dialogue with them like call them up text them chat with them in the app make them know like if there's an issue call me right away like report a problem in the app right away um make them feel like part of the team even though you're you know technically hiring them off an app or, you know, up the street, like you want to make them feel like they're part of the business is, is what I would say. That's, that's where I see a lot of success and, you know, super host ratings, climbing this ratings go up. Cool. Awesome. Um, let's see, we've got some audience questions. Um, how long do crews typically take to complete a cleaning job? What, what's the industry <laughs> standard and uh, how... <laughs> is there is there such a thing yeah so it's tough um it, and we can sidebar after i think this came from laura and we're open to questions too after if anyone wants i can like put my email in like honestly we're here um but it really depends on where you are right um how large your place is how are you in like a resort destination where the cleaning crew has to drive there i mean there's it all depends on size. It depends on the scope of work, depends on the type of property um, or linens being done on site. There, there's just, there's, there's really no straight answer to that. But if you could give me like, you know, I have a two, two and I'm located in Atlanta. Um, we can give you like a range and you can actually go on our site. I don't know where you're located, um, but just go in there. Just go to like turno.com or find a cleaner and just type in your zip put in okay I have a four bed three bath it's this many square feet hit search and we're going to push all that information you're going to get cleaners um that'll bid and, and then you can see the range because you're going to have the lower end and then you're going to have the higher end um and it's kind of up to you um who you want to go with so yeah cool um mm -hmm. we've got a question from Naticia, and she asks, uh, do you require proof of insurance from cleaners? So do you think that is a best practice? Yeah, so in our app, um, what we require, well, when we first got started, we didn't require anything, to be totally honest, startup, but now, now we've kind of uh, rolled out background checks to everyone. Now cleaners, if they are bonded, if they have insurance, if they have a business license, um, they also they can put those badges in there. So if you're when you do a search, you're going to see if a cleaner has liability insurance. You're going to see if they're a business. You're going to see if they're bonded. Um, it really depends on the area. I personally never have used someone like on my own that isn't um, insured, just because like where I am, there's a ton of cleaners that have insurance. There are certain markets where cleaners do well enough. I, I'll admittedly. 
like not major metro areas, but like random pocketed places in North America where a lot of the cleaners don't carry it. But it's something we're really pushing the cleaners um, to get just because, I mean, I wouldn't want someone slipping and falling on my property. And if my personal insurance or my business insurance doesn't cover, you know, the cleaner coming in, um, personally, I wouldn't want to be liable. So I would be very cognizant of that. And um, <laughs> to be honest, like we want to use as many cleaners as possible, but this puts pressure on the cleaners to go out and get insured, right? And even tell them, be like, hey, I want to work with you, but I need to see an insurance binder. Like we have no problem with that. Um, it's not that hard. We have resources for cleaners to get it. Um, it it's super easy. Cool. Yeah, and having that competitive marketplace kind of ups everybody else's game. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like certain markets, everyone has insurance. Other markets that aren't as, you know, we're not as competitive. It, it's it's not as you know high priority. But if I'm a cleaner and someone's going to give me a ton of work. I'm going to go out and get a binder, right? Cool. Um, April asks, how does it work with a motel property turned into a short-term rental? Um, Ooh, so, I love that. Yeah, is, is, um, is Cherno uh, a good solution for that, that scenario? It is, it is. One of our, our big clients that we work with, um, their business is literally going in and buying up these uh, you know, mom and pop motels, boutique hotels, and they solely use turno cleaners. It's a great, a great functionality. I don't know if you've set it up where you know there's door codes, but through the guesty in our app, there's individual door codes or access. You can push the cleaners new codes every time with that integration. Um, it's honestly an easier flip because it's a smaller sized room. There's probably some sort of centralized laundry in that place, which actually works like beautifully. Um, and if you're on that, you know, STR model you're probably not going to get as much like, you know, churn or like random checkout like a hotel would. Um, but with that being said, if someone wants to extend, they're going to extend through Guesty for host. And then uh, that cleaner is going to get notified. So if there's a cancellation and extension, that's going to come in through a notification. It's going to change the project up. It's going to let them know, hey, this is what it is now. Can you make it? And we're going to notify them. So the cleaner's working on one app and you guys are working on, the other and it's, it's pairing with each other all right um we've got a question from anthony who's a new host and he's looking to learn and he asks is it a best practice to set up contracts with cleaners or just use the cleaners on an as-needed basis um it's a, it's a good question um uh, depending on your market i don't know where you are um it, it, it's kind of market driven I think it's best practice to have, like, if I have one property, I would probably have like five people on my roster that I've already talked to, interviewed with, and maybe take like the top one and make them your primary. And they're going to know if they're on our platform that, you know, there's competition out there. So they're fighting for a relationship. That's, that's kind of what we're driving at. Like the cleaner, they can go out and do one job and maybe make a hundred bucks. But if you're doing, you know, I don't know what you do a year, but say 50, 60 turns a year, that's a lot more money that they're going to make. And it's once, once the relationship cultivates and those cleaners know the property, they're going to be a lot more efficient with it. Um, and, and I would, I would stick to like a really good cleaner. And then as needed, I would roll in backups because there's maybe a time where that person needs a day off. Like we're all humans. Um, there could be like a Sunday that they have to spend with their family and then you're going to have those other backup cleaners to uh, to fill in as well. So that's kind of how I would. Cool. Um, we've got Farouk who's asking, um, what's a good list process for cleaning an Airbnb? Quality control is difficult with multiple cleaners. So you did yeah. talk about the fact that people great should question. create one. Yeah. Yeah. So well, again, as we've evolved, it used to be like, hey, create a checklist. If you go into our site, we have a popular checklist um, section where you can actually pull off of other host checklists, which like if you go in and basically just do a search, like say you have a two, two, right? Type in two bedroom and I can even like share out. Um, maybe we could do like an email with like a bunch of ones that, um, you know, are, are kind of best practice ones. Um, that's something we can also push out to you guys. But you can go through and search through other host checklists. 
Some are more robust. Um, I have people that require like 87 items and 40 pictures. Other people have like a 10 list checklist. I would say if you're using one of our marketplace cleaners, my best advice is to get give them as much information as possible because they have to fill, fill out that checklist. They're going to take pictures and that's how they're getting paid is once they do everything, everything's checked off, they hit complete. And then that's how that payment process to the cleaner. Um, so more information, the better. Less information is, is where um, you kind of run into trouble. Cool. Um, we have Robert asking, are the cleanings scheduled at check-in or check-out of reservations? So I guess he's asking, should you trigger based on the yeah. checkout date or the following yep. check-in date? Yep, so we have both options. 95% um, of our users um, trigger it on checkout. So the idea behind that is um, guest checks out, you might not have a check-in for two, three days. We have what's called a flexible cleaning window, which they can clean in the middle of it. But most hosts, most property managers are going to clean upon checkout, mainly because that thing gets turned. You then can list right on the OTA. You could get a last minute booking. They get a booking, you, you know, you give the cleaner three days to clean, but then a booking comes through at 10 p.m. the night before. Then you're scrambling to get out there. So the best practice is to schedule after um, checkout. Now, if there's like a long gap, it might be good practice to do what's like called like a little refresh clean or like an inspection clean, whether you do that or you have someone that can go out for like 20 minutes just to make sure, you know, dust didn't like happen or like there wasn't a water leak, like something weird like that. Um, if there's like a big gap, but I would definitely recommend after checkout if that's what I personally do. Um, because you never know, like uh, if you have your, your floodgates open for bookings, because we want bookings, right? Um, we don't want to be in a situation where we can't accept a booking because the place wasn't clean. Makes total sense. Um, okay. We've got one from Angie and she says, I clean my own house at this time. It usually takes me 12 hours from beginning to end. Um, she Whoa. has a 24 hour window between bookings. And so she's asking, do you think I should try for two people at a time? So can you, can you book multiple cleaners um, mm -hmm. for a single job? Um, yes and no. Um, what I usually recommend is in the search, say, hey, look, this place usually takes this much time. Um, a lot of our cleaners on the platform have teams and it'll identify, hey, I'm an individual or I have a team of four people. So the cleaners, when you when you put a search out, put a description, like literally copy and paste what you just said here. Like, hey, I'm cleaning my own house. It usually takes me this long. Um, I have this 24 hour window. Honestly, you can probably make more money, um, you know, over the course of a year. If you don't, you can get rid of that 24 hour window because there are cleaning crews that can come in. I don't know how big, unless this is like a 12 bedroom place, which um, then you might be kind of SOL but um the other thing too is and I, I see this a lot like and I'm the same way like I have a cleaning company and I don't think anyone can clean as good as me even though I'm terrible at it right so it's like that kind of admitting to yourself that you know someone else can do this it might not be as good as me but as long as that quality is at the level in which I'm you know okay with and the guest is going to be okay with um it, it's worth it but, you know, 12 hours is a lot of time that you could be, you know, doing other things. Um, so it's totally up to you. But I would give it a shot, like, you know, push it out there, give them this information, um, list the square footage, how many bedrooms there are. There's like, you know, bunk beds, like just be as descriptive as possible and you're going to get the best um, result. Awesome. Um, question from Anthony. So when you're a new Airbnb host, um, mm -hmm. still getting your property upgraded cosmetically, um, how soon should you connect with a cleaner before you launch officially on Airbnb? I would probably say like two weeks um, prior to launch would be like a good, good time frame um, because it, it really depends. You could do it the day before, but 
like I would honestly, if you're getting, if you're going to, if you're going fresh, I would book a cleaner off. I don't know the size of the space, but I would personally do it and have them come do a walkthrough, like a test clean on the place. Cause you, you, you got to clean it before the first guest anyways. Um, and kind of not watch them, but you're going to see when they started and when they ended, um, you know, when you don't know your best practices, it, it's cool to learn them. Um, you might want to have you like your buddy or whoever come in and like tussle it around a little bit. And then you come in and, you know, see what you think your best practice is. And I mean, these are professionals that do this every day. So, I mean, they're probably going to be a lot better than, you know, someone that doesn't have experience with it. Um, so I'd kind of ride off that and, and kind of, uh, go from there, but everyone's different. I mean, that's what's, that's, what's crazy about this industry. Like if you're a hotel housekeeper, you have a stock room and everything's the same. Whereas in this industry, I mean, you have tree houses, you guys could have glamping. Like, I mean, you got everything under the sun. That's why I love it. Like it's, everything's unique. Um, everything's different. It's kind of a challenge. So, uh, that's what I would advise. Cool. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with a couple questions here. Um, but mm -hmm. Pamela asks, um, my challenge with using outside cleaners is that they want to charge a large amount to clean the whole house, but it's rarely all used. So do you ever mm -hmm. see a situation where a cleaner is told ahead of time, like how many guests there are? So the price is adjusted or any other like, um, usage or variable, um, pricing depending on different factors. Yes and no. Um, it, it's, it's again, what I was getting at, like, yes, the whole house might not be used, but if you're just on that assumption, there might be some pocket of the house that, you know, you might not catch. Like I've run into the a situation recently where there's two fridges in the house. The cleaner didn't check the other fridge. There's a bunch of smelly stuff in there that the guests left, like leftover pizza. They complained to Airbnb. And it wasn't checked. It wasn't like on a checklist and then they're getting a partial refund. So yes, you can kind of assume that the whole place wasn't cleaned. Um, but I, I wouldn't probably, it, it's so tough. Like I get it. Like some people, nine times out of 10, like guests come in and they're, they're very good, right? Maybe they don't use the whole place. Um, uh, but then there's those one-offs where the cleaner gets in there and it's a damn mess. And they're going to spend more time than they normally would. So if you have like a cleaner that's cleaning consistently for you, they're going to have times where, yes, they get through it a lot quicker. But then when there's those times where they, people leave a huge mess, um, they're going to kind of go to bat for you and get it done. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things where it, it, it it's really tough to basically ask them for money back because it wasn't used, right? Um, so that's where pricing, as we touched on that survey, is a big concern because every time it's different, right? Uh, but it usually tends to equal out. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's take one last question here. Um, what are some best practices questions when you're vetting a cleaner? And um, yeah. just to follow up on that, like what are what are some basic vetting um, procedures that uh, Cherno uses um, for their yeah for people who join their platform? Yeah, so I can kind of walk through our process real quick. That's a good way to close up. Um, so we get a lot of applications every month, and we actually only accept like a small portion of them recently, depending on location. Um, so the cleaners have to provide two references in which they've cleaned a short-term rental or something similar. We then reach out to those references. Then we have an onboarding call with someone on our team. Um, we have an office here in Miami where we have 12 people that onboard cleaners and they train them on the platform. Um, from there on those onboarding calls, um, they really kind of drive in and you know make sure uh, that they kind of know what they're doing. They know how to work the app. Um, and then from there, they would get accepted onto the platform. And this is after they passed their background check, which is um, required for them to come on board. Um, and from there, we kind of put them on the marketplace. And much like Airbnb, we've kind of created this ecosystem where if you're fresh, you know, you're loading up, it's really tough to get a job, right? Because there's probably 20, 30 other cleaners in that area that have completed 
you know, 100 plus cleans and they have a bunch of reviews from customers. You're coming in fresh. You got to be aggressive with pricing. You kind of, you know, prove your worth. So there's, it's kind of a double edged sword where you can get someone that's fresh and new that's going to be the best cleaner ever and you're probably going to get a better price, but they could potentially not be. And if they, you know, do a poor job and you give them a terrible review, probably not going to win another job and they're not going to last in the ecosystem. Just like Airbnb, if you have, you know, a new property with one or two reviews or zero, then that first person comes and it's a train wreck. And then the second person comes and it's a train wreck. You're not going to rank. Um, so cleaners know this. It, it's a very competitive market, um, you know, competitive business to be in. Um, but it all does, does because uh, I saw some questions coming in. We are very strong in North America. We're strong in the UK. We're, we're expanding into Europe. We support languages and we all have, they're all localization too. So we have 24 seven support with live native speaking um, members that, that, that speak those languages, but there are places that our marketplace isn't strong. So, you know, if you're in North Dakota, we're not gonna have the same coverage that we do in San Diego, right? And uh, if you're in the mountains and you have like a beautiful like ski resort, it, 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 it's, it's all subjective. If you're in Key West, well, I'm sorry, we don't have a lot of cleaners because everyone is in these beautiful homes and there's nowhere to live. I wish I could live in Key West, but I can't afford it myself. So there, there, there are places that we don't have great coverage, but for the most part, we are a great solution. Um, if you have your own cleaner already, you can put them on this app. And I know there's probably some confusion because there are users. I know there are guesty for us users that have one property. We don't bill for one property uh, as it is. Now, if you have two or three, the subscription is totally free. So I saw some questions about that. That's where that confusion would be. So I just wanted to clear that up too. All right, awesome. Well, uh, I think we're gonna wrap things up. So uh, thank you everybody for your great questions. Um, here's just the last reminder that we're currently offering 30% off an annual plan when you sign up for Guesty for Hosts. And we thank everyone for joining us for this Guesty for Hosts meetup. Uh, we hope you got a lot out of it. We will be sure to follow up on any questions you didn't get to. Uh, want to give a special thank you to you, Mike, our guest speaker. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And we hope to see you all again at one of our next Guesty for Hosts virtual events. So stay tuned for what we have coming up. Uh, you can head at hosts.guesty.com slash events to keep tabs on our next events. And please don't hesitate to reach out to events.hosts at guesty.com with any other questions you might have for us. Um, I think we'll leave it there. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Stay safe. Uh, thank you and goodbye.